Hey everybody, I'm getting ready to cook dinner on the Blackstone Grill and Kebab, so I thought I'd bring you along for a little behind the scenes look at how I film my videos. And I have something new in my Blackstone arsenal since the last time I showed you the Grill and Kebab a cover. I can't thank Blackstone enough for their continued support of my channel. The Grill and Kebab cover is sweet, covers the chimney, has a slim fit over the entire unit. Definitely worth the investment to get yourself a cover for your Blackstone. I store the electric motor on top of the grill grates and I keep the 11 rotisserie skewers stored in the slots on the side table. If we remove a few of the grill grates, you'll see that I always empty the ashtray and put fresh charcoal in the charcoal tray before I store the unit again. And because I like to make all the so-called barbecue experts cringe, I'm using charcoal lighter fluid. If you're using charcoal lighter fluid, make sure you let it soak into your charcoal for a few minutes so it doesn't burn off too quickly. We have five kids age nine and under, so as you can imagine, it's pretty difficult for my wife and I to both get outside uh, to help me film a cooking video. So I film 99% of my own videos. It might take me a good 60 to 90 minutes to film something that actually takes just 20 minutes of cooking. I'm constantly having to reposition the camera to focus each shot. And because I do all my own filming, it might take me five or 10 minutes just to focus and crop a shot like this. I have many times where the food burns while I'm trying to develop a shot. So I need to take that food inside, let the family eat it, come back out with new food and try to make it look perfect. The charcoal fluid is completely burned off. You can see I have some nice hot coals. I'll close the lid and admit to a blunder that I made last spring. The chimney is now correctly installed. If you're assembling your grill and kebab for the first time, make sure that this chimney plate is on the inside of the lid. I installed mine on the outside of the lid last year. I was using a rubber mallet to try to bend it down to the contour of the outside of the lid. When I was in Las Vegas with Blackstone, at the National Hardware Show last year, I mentioned to one of the Blackstone guys, hey, it's really annoying that that plate doesn't fit right on the outside of the lid. And he informed me, well, that's because you did it wrong, Todd. It's supposed to go on the inside of the lid. After five minutes, the temperature's creeping up. We're almost at 350. Several viewers have asked me about the electric motor. This is what the electric motor looks like. It connects to the unit here, the turning shaft on one end, and the power button on the other side slides on to the back of the unit plug it into a standard electrical outlet or extension cord and that's it the motor is hooked up and ready to use meanwhile the temperature inside the unit is up to a scorching 425 degrees red bell pepper red onion and a nice two pound piece of Wyoming mule deer backstrap. Backstraps are the pieces of meat that run on either side of animals backbones. Let's rub the filet with venison rub. I'm going to take one of the kebab rotisserie skewers and we're going to slide it right through the center of this filet. Since I'm gonna be cooking with the skewers tonight and not on the grates, I can use a pair of tongs to move the grates to the other side. I'll put the filet in first and I can lower my charcoal tray a few inches so I don't burn the back strap. And just like that, we're rotisserie cooking with hardwood charcoal. Close the lid and let this delicious piece of meat cook. I just got the cord to the microphone end of my Rode lavalier mic caught on a doorknob and it ripped the microphone clear off the wire. Sadly, this is the second time this has happened in the last two months. I went inside and shed a few tears. Time to move on. Let's check in on the meat, see if I can forget about my troubles 
That looks delicious. Now I can add my veggies and reposition the filet. I'm gonna drizzle some olive oil on the onions and peppers, which will allow my high mountain garlic pepper to stick to the vegetables. Let's turn the motor off and get a temperature of the meat. 150 degrees. hundred and forty five degrees that should be just about perfect you do not want to overcook a wild game steak so different than domestic beef there's no fat in there they're extremely lean so you want to make sure it's good and pink in the center now I can remove the meat skewer come over here and put it on some aluminum foil wrap it up and let that rest for a few minutes while we wait for the vegetables to finish cooking. Reach around back, turn the motor off, remove the skewers. Remove my hat, welcome our daughter Hannah, and let's get a bite here. Let's give it a try. Perfectly cooked, not overdone, and tender on the inside, outstanding. You cannot mistake the taste of that hardwood charcoal. It tastes so good, the smell is out of this world. Mule deer backstrap. If you haven't subscribed to my videos, please do so. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up or leave an encouraging comment. I'll leave my Blackstone referral link in the description below along with my 10% off code. that will give you 10% off anything at blackstoneproducts.com. It's Todd Tovin 10. T-O-D-D-T-O-V-E-N-10. Todd Tovin 10. So until next time, this is the Rocky Mountain Meat Hunter along with our youngest son, Levi, our oldest daughter, Hannah, saying praise the Lord. And pass the venison. That's right. Even though I'm $200 in the hole, I broke my microphone, and I set myself into a huge depression in the middle of this video, I still choose to praise the Lord. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Have a good night.